Hey everyone, and welcome to the third video in my JavaScript Maps API tutorial series, where in this video we're going to be going over markers. So you can add objects to your Google Map to designate points, lines, areas, and much more. And the Maps JavaScript API calls these objects overlays. So overlays are essentially just images on your map. And there are many types of overlays, and the overlay we will be focusing on today is markers. So markers are those classic red pinpoint things that you see on Google Maps whenever you search a location. Specifically, markers display single locations on the map. The JavaScript Maps API allows us to customize markers such as changing their color, their shape, or even use an entirely different image as the marker. By default, a marker uses a standard image, that red pinpoint thing that you'll see in a second, but we can make them display custom images instead. And when we do this, markers are then referred to as icons. So this is just some terminology to know. And because of this, both markers and icons are objects of the class marker. So let me first make a new one here, video3.html. And I'm just going to copy, actually, the stuff from our first video and paste it in here. Close this out as well. And then instead of loading this, Let's load this with live server. Okay, cool. So we have a fresh um, map object right here. And so as I said, a marker is made with the class marker. So remember we made our map with google.maps.map. Well, a marker is made with google.maps.marker. So to create a marker, we create an instance of the marker class. And so the Google Maps marker constructor takes an object or it takes a marker options object as an argument specifying the initial properties of the marker. So I'm just going to make a variable called marker options, set that equal to an empty object, and a required key is position. And so what this does is it specifies a latitude and longitude object identifying the initial location of the marker. So we know how to make one of those. It's the class LAT LNG, and then let's pass in the latitude and longitude, 832, and then negative 87.623177. I believe that's correct. And then also, though, another key that we need to use, it's not required, but this puts it on our map. So see how we have, we use the key map to place it on this map object here. So the map that you provide in here, see so you had multiple maps or something, is um, the map that this marker will be placed on. And then, of course, we pass this into our constructor here. So marker options. And now you can see here it is. So this is the classic little uh, red marker. And let's just say, like you can see it just moving around now, so let's do 45 for that. Let's zoom out. And you can see it's all the way up here now. So the map property here isn't required, so you may think it would be required, but it's not. And um, the reason is that is because we can actually use a method called set map. So if I end this and I do, we can do marker dot set map, and then of course we pass in a Google Maps map object. And let me turn this to your original so we can see it. So that's another way that we can set the marker on the map. So if we create the marker but don't specify the map, the marker is created but not displayed on the map. So this is how you add a marker to a map. But to remove a marker from a map, you can you use the same set map method, but you pass null as the argument. So what I'm going to do is let's just do a set timeout. Of course, we pass in a function. And let's say after three seconds, because this is in milliseconds, we want our marker to disappear. So we'll do marker.setMap to be null. So let's wait. And you can see it's been, it now disappears after three uh, seconds. So if we set map to null, that's how we remove the marker from the map. But just note, this doesn't actually delete the marker, but rather it just removes it from the map. If you want to delete the marker, you should remove it from the map and then also set the marker itself to null. So delete it, you do that, and then you'd pass in null, and that would completely delete the marker. But now, to make multiple markers, all we need to do, so say you wanted to create multiple of these, all we need to do is create multiple marker objects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a triangle in Lake um, 
Michigan just to demonstrate this real quick. So first let me uh, center over there with this and then keep this the same. So you could see, and then let's zoom out to, I don't know, eight. Cool, just like this. And so for our first one, let's change this to 42 and this to negative 86. So we have one marker up there. And now if we wanted to create a second marker, let's just do that marker options two equal to this and position. And let's just copy and paste this here, except change this to negative 87 or sorry, negative 87. And then let's create a second marker. So marker two equals new google dot dot maps dot marker. And then let's pass in marker options two. And of course, let me get rid of this. And then let's do marker two dot set map to be map. So they didn't display because I misspelled this. So now let's try that. So you can see we have two markers here now. And then let's just add a third one. So let's do marker options three. So that equal to an empty object and position this. But let's just do for this one, just 42 and negative 87. And then let's create our third marker. Let's pass in marker options three, and then marker three dot set map to be our map. Cool, so we've created a triangle of markers. So that was just, I don't really know why I did that to be honest, I guess it was just because I could show you how you can use multiple markers, so don't be afraid to do that. But let's go back oop, to just our original marker. So like this. But so we, know, we now know how to add and remove markers from our map. But let's focus now on how to customize them. And one way we can customize our marker is to change the image used to display a marker. And remember, when this is done, the marker is now called an icon. And to change the icon displayed as our marker, we use the key or the icon key in our marker options object provided to the marker constructor. So here we just use the key icon. And then what we pass it is, um, let's say an image file that we wanna use. So what I have done is I have added an image file here called witcode marker. And this dot dash means basically from the current location we are in. And then I'm gonna do witcode marker. And let's say it's save. And I believe it's not loading because I forgot to tag on the extension. So PNG. And I still spelt it wrong, so I add an R here. Now if we can move up, you can see we have this giant, <laughs> this giant pin that I made. So this will be the new. So whatever we specify is here can be the image that replaces that default red icon or that red marker. So essentially what this icon property here takes is the URL of an image. And the Maps JavaScript API will then size the icon automatically, meaning if we zoom in and out, the size adjusts respectively. So you kind of saw that if I'm zooming in, you can see it kind of gets smaller. Zoom out, it kind of gets bigger. But we can also set the icon outside of the constructor by using a set icon method. So basically anything that isn't required in one of these options, we can use it later um, with a different with a method. So we can do set icon. So you could like dynamically change your icon based off this method. So I do that, you can see we get the, um, the custom one again. And so of course what we pass in here again is the URL to the image. But now let's start talking about adding text to a label. And this is known as a marker label. And a marker label is a sequence of characters that appear inside a marker. And once again, we can make this label inside the marker options object that is passed to our marker constructor. So we just use the key label, and let's say, let's do wit codes place. So I'm escaping that, um, this apostrophe right here. 
and let's do this. And if we zoom out, sorry, if we cover over it, you can see now we have text over here as well saying WIC codes place. And then of course we can, instead of doing this this way, we can of course, like we did set icon, we could dynamically do it being like set label and passing that in here. And then if we go scroll up, you can see we have WIC codes place again. And we can also set a tooltip on the marker which is essentially just the text that shows up on the hover and um, the, basically the same way as a label. So to do that, to add a tooltip, we use the key title. And let's say um, subscribe to WIC code is the title. And then, if we, and then if we come over here and we hover over this, you can see we get that little tooltip that says subscribe to WIC code. And then once again, we can do this with our with a method, just like so we could do it dynamically. We can do marker dot set title, pass this in, and then scroll up, hover over this, and you can see we get that um, title again. And now the next thing I want to talk about is an interesting topic known as optimizing markers. So optimizing a marker means enhancing performance of your website by rendering many markers as a single static element. And this is useful if in your website you require a large number of markers. So the Maps JavaScript API itself decides whether a marker will be optimized. For example, when there is a large number of markers, the Maps JavaScript API will try to render these markers with optimization. However, we can of course explicitly state if we want a marker to be optimized or not. And this is done with the keyword optimized. So in here, in our marker options object, we would do optimized and then true. And so this is a good time to talk about marker optimization because it impacts marker accessibility. Making a marker accessible basically means allowing a user to click on it by adding a click event listener. And because setting optimized to true makes the marker static, we need to make sure that our marker is optimized set to false for it to be accessible. So because remember, if it's optimized, that means it's static, but we want to be able to work with it. So let's make it so when we click our marker, its latitude and longitude are displayed. And to do this, we um, first need to add an event listener to our marker with the method add listener. So marker dot add listener. And we will, be, we will go over JavaScript maps API events later on, but for now, know that each maps JavaScript API object exports events or exports events and we can listen for them with the Google Maps add listener method and the event we want to listen for um, is a click event and then what we supply is a callback method that receives a mouse event of the type google.maps.mouse event which is decorated with some useful information so it's given a Google Maps event is supplied to our callback function. And now let's make it so when we click on the marker, we print its latitude and longitude in an H3 tag. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna create an H3 tag and I'm gonna give it the ID info. And um, also I'm gonna change some of the flex properties here. I'm gonna change flex direction to column so that it will be on top as opposed to in a row. But now let's go back down here and work in our method. So to do this, I'm going to do document.getElementById, and we call, gave it the ID info, and we're going to set the inner HTML equal to latitude, and then we will add on our Google Maps event. We can access a property um, lat long like this, and then we can have a function lat, which will return the latitude, and then we can also do longitude, and then add on this the same way, dot lat long dot ln g. So of course I'm going to be going over um, all of this stuff more as we go over, over events, but just know for now this is how we can access the latitude and longitude, but let's try this out now. So let me click on this. And so when I was clicking on this, it wasn't working, and the reason is because I need to make this a capital L. So this is a capital L, and this is a capital L. 
And now let's try it again. So if we click on this, you can see we get printed latitude and longitude. So that's a little cool thing we can do by um, working with our, mar our markers and adding events to them. And so that is how we can make a marker interactive, and it is also a little glimpse of what we'll be learning about when we start talking about uh, the JavaScript Maps API events. But now let's start talking about animating a marker. And animating a marker means giving it movement. And to make a marker animated, we use the markers animation property. So within here, we use the key animation. And this property takes an argument of the type google.maps.animation. And actually, sorry, it's not a constructor, but it's actually a constant. And so one of the options we can pass to it is drop. So let's see what happens if we do that. Well, actually, let me move the center of our map back to, or to whatever it is with where the marker is, so that we can see it fall better. So this and this here, press save. And so there you go, you could see it fall down. So by clicking this, you can see each time it loads, it drops into place. So this makes it so the marker drops from the top of the map to its final location when the marker is first placed on the map. And so you can imagine that this type of, inf or that this type of animation is usually specified during the creation of the marker. And also, as a side note, when animation stops, the marker's animation property will revert to null. And then the other animation value that is accepted in the marker constructor is bounce. So we have drop right here. We also can do bounce. And so you can see this makes our marker start bouncing. And the marker will continue to do this until its animation property is set to null. So to set the animation besides using the constructor, you can use the method setAnimation. So let's make it so that after five seconds, the marker stops bouncing. So I'm going to do, let's do it here, set timeout. And in our function, we're going to do marker.set animation to null, which will make it stop bouncing. And we're going to do that after five, that's 50,000, after five seconds have passed. So you can see it's bouncing at the moment. And then it stops after the five seconds because we set the animation to null. And you may have also guessed that because we have a setter for animation, we also have a getter called get animation. So we can check to see what the current animation of a marker is at a given time. So let's use that h3 tag again to display the current animation of the marker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. I'm going to delete this listener that we had. And in here, after that timer, we're going to set that equal to marker.get animation. So usually when we have a set, like set icon, set label, we also have a getter, of course, but let me show you the animation one. So let's do that there. And then let's also put this out here and let's do marker.get animation, quick save. And you can see we have the value of one at the moment, which corresponds to bounce, because these are just going to be constants. And then you can also see that um, because it's going to be null, this is just set to null and we have nothing put up there. So if we set this for drop, I believe the value might be zero or two. So you can see it's set to two. So these are just constants that represent that animation essentially. Now the final thing I want to go over about markers is how to make them draggable, meaning making it so you can drag a marker to a different location on the map. And this is really easy. This is just done with the key draggable and we just set that equal to true. And so now if we get this, I can, you can see I can move it around. And we also get a nice little X, which basically marks this. You may think this pointer here is where it's pointing to, but it's actually this little X just because of the way the icon is that I made. But that's a draggle property that you can use. But so this was um, my video on learning about markers in the JavaScript Maps API. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. In the next video, we are going to be working with um, info windows. So those are also usually used along with markers to give information about a certain place. But so we're going to be working with those. So I guess I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.